All right, First Chronicles 16, let's call this one before you move on. Why? Because in the last chapter, we got to see how it was important for David not to give up before he gave God one more chance to help him get the ark as long as David was willing to tweak his approach enough to actually carry it the way that God said it needed to be carried safely. And so in this chapter, we're going to say, look, before you move on from the fact that God has now blessed you to be able to get the ark in position, you need to understand how to give thanks. And so David here is going to not only provide a provision for the ark to be placed in the uh, spot that he's prepared for it, but provision for the people who came to celebrate the occasion. And finally, provision for them to all give thanks in this chapter that is largely devoted to his song of thanks, which starts out simply enough with give thanks to the Lord. But again, this is going to help us understand something we talked about before, and that is the distinction between thanks or lip service thanks and genuine gratitude, because David is going to go on beyond simply saying offer generalized thanks to God to tell people what he has specifically done for you. Why? Because it's one thing to have enough courtesy to simply be thankful. It's another thing to say thanks with specificity that helps people think, wait a minute. I'm struggling with that too. And if that person got help there, maybe I can get help there as well. And so he is going to tell them to give specific thanks that help people um, see that they can come to Israel as a source for genuine transformation, which is something that is going to be mentioned in the New Testament. That is what we are supposed to be about even to this day, showing people a healthy before and after picture, which leads into the next points because David is eventually going to get into the need for them to remember what God has done for them, meaning they started out as the descendants of a rich man to whom God gave a covenant uh, specifically so that he would be a blessing to all families of the earth. But he brought that rich man's family through slavery in Egypt. So they could, as a nation, if they remembered where they came from, they could be able to relate to everyone from the richest to the least in society, understanding that before they were started as a nation, God brought them out of what was quite likely the lowest rung of Egyptian society. And so in this prayer of thanks, as we've seen in other places where the author has taken the time to recount Israel's history, they do it with a purpose so that they can remember how they were treated as a nation before they became, under Solomon, the greatest nation on earth. Why is that? Because as we've already seen in the days of Solomon, they weren't just great for the sake of Israel. They were great so that other people, once again, could come to Israel for what seemed to be not just answers to their trivial questions, but the things that were actually troubling them. And it points forward to something we're going to see in the prophets as well when it talks about the mountain of the Lord rising above all mountains, not just so that they can be great and talk down to the nations around them, but so that the nations around them, really all the earth could come to them for help. Why? Because by the time we get to the end of this chapter, that's the scope of what David is talking about. He's going to go beyond all the peoples or families of the earth to say that the earth itself, all of it, can give credit to God if Israel is who they need to be. Why? Because there are times when we can lose track of the way that our decisions impact not only the people around us, but the things around us. And what this reminds us of is something we saw in the sabbatical law. The sabbatical was not something to simply give the people at work in Israel a rest. It was to give the land at work in Israel a rest. And we get to see another perspective on that at the end of this chapter, where he's calling out to the earth itself, the physical earth, the sea and the things in them to give thanks to God for the relief that he can bring. So that really pointed me back to that portion of this chapter that says in verse 11, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. And why is that important? Well, quite possibly because each of us is only given one lifetime to live on this planet. And no matter how many experiences we have, our experience is going to be limited. And so even though we can provide a great before and after picture of the transformation that God can produce in a life, that's only one experience that chapters like this seem to make it clear is simply designed to let people know what is possible in their own lives, understanding that the wisest of us can only give people so many solutions to their own problems because their problems are unique enough that they are inevitably going to go beyond our experience in some way, but they're never going to go beyond the experience that God has in helping people fix their lives. And so in showing us an example of giving thanks in this chapter, David is going beyond verbal thanks to show what gratitude actually looks like in the way that he emphasizes the way that Israel is supposed to diligently seek God. So that those who come to God can move beyond simply getting quick relief into the deeper solutions to the things in life that trouble us.